Good morning and welcome to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I sure am glad to be with you here today. I wanted to let you know one more time in case you missed it, our plans for Good Friday and Easter Sunday. On Good Friday, the sanctuary will be open from noon to one and then again from 7 to 8 p.m. for a time and space for reflection and prayer. There will be live music and prayer prompts and invitations to reflection scattered throughout the sanctuary. So we hope that you will join us for this time as we pray and reflect and lean in on this sad and holy occasion of the death of Jesus. And then a few days later, we get the chance to celebrate Christ's resurrection on Easter Sunday. We are still working out some of the kinks with the live stream and, and hybrid, and so we don't quite have all the details yet, but know that there will be a service for you to watch at home, and there will be some elements here live if you would like to come to church on Easter Sunday. So if you do want to come in person, would you please just drop us a note and let us know. There's an RSVP link on our website, summitav.net, and we look forward to celebrating together on Easter Sunday. Now, if you haven't had a chance yet, or maybe you've just forgotten, to send in an offering for one great hour of sharing, here is your reminder that we are still collecting money for this great opportunity to serve and love our neighbors. And maybe this video will inspire you today to give and to give generously. You can't hide love. It shows up where you least expect it, in places where food is scarce, in the rubble of a disaster's aftermath, where water is hard to come by, where home is a tent in a foreign land, in the middle of a pandemic. Love seeks us out. One great hour of sharing has sought to minister to people in need all over the world for more than 70 years. The work we have done behind the scenes responding to disasters, feeding the hungry, providing water to the thirsty, and empowering those who have been marginalized may not make headlines. But eventually, you just can't hide love. Join us in our pursuit to show God's love all over the world. Give to one great hour of sharing. My friends, this past Wednesday, our church was a buzz with activity. After so many months of it just being a handful of us here in and out, it was so encouraging to see uh, people here in the fellowship hall for a Bible study at lunchtime. There was a small group meeting in the Don Seri room in the afternoon. And then again, the fellowship hall was filled with laughter and light and play as we gathered some of our Summit families for a play date. And as they were here, safely, of course, all the COVID precautions we can take, we are doing. We participated in a Palm Sunday parade. And so while the sanctuary wasn't full of your beautiful faces, the kids walking around, walking and parading outside and through the church was a joyous occasion. And so as we sing together, May you let the little children lead you, lead us, as we celebrate Jesus, who all those years ago arrived in Jerusalem on a donkey, a symbol of peace, a symbol of humility. Let us sing.
come together on this last Sunday of Lent for a time of confession, I invite you to join me as we say some words aloud and then pause for quiet, thoughtful reflection and confession in each of our hearts. As we begin today, I invite you to imagine Jesus entering our presence as he entered Jerusalem all those years ago, being greeted with shouts of Hosanna and waving of palm branches, understanding who he is and who we are. Let us pray together. Oh God, you know us well. We are quick to speak of faith, but slow to live it fully. We shout Hosanna as Jesus approaches, as did the people of Jerusalem many years ago, but we do not want him to come too close not close enough to really see. And we pray together, O oh God, you know us well. We are quick to claim faith in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but like the throng who greeted his entry into Jerusalem, we are fickle slow to live fully and everywhere as faithful disciples. We know where we fail. And we pray together, O oh God, you know us well. We are quick to want the blessing of faithfulness but like the 12 who spent the last week with him, we are slow to accept the pain and suffering of authentic Christ-like living. Forgive our weakness and fear. words of assurance, the Lord is God, and the Lord brings light to those in darkness, forgiveness to those who truly confess, and pardon to all those who seek to follow Jesus. Rejoice that the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever and ever. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive this day the love that never dies and never fails. And may the peace of Christ be with you. My name is Olivia. May the peace of Christ be with you. I'm Isla. Be peace with me. Be peace with me. Peace of Christ be with you. I'm Danny Lou. Peace of Christ be with you. My name's Thomas R. Cornelis the third. What? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Henry Kennedy. Peace, peace of, of Christ, Christ be with you. I am Eva. Peace of Christ be with you. Copeland. You're Copeland. Can you say peace of Christ? Peace of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. On Wednesday of this last week, children came to the church for an afternoon play date and the very excellent parade of palms and branches that we got to see at the beginning of the service. We had palms for the kids here and we also invited them to bring their own if they wanted. One boy brought a branch from an evergreen tree at home. 
He did very much the same as the people that first Palm Sunday when Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem. Matthew's gospel says that a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. I've been thinking a lot about that branch that Camper cut down and brought to the church, about the many branches people cut down and lay on the ground for Jesus to walk on as he entered the holy city. The cloaks that people took off their shoulders and lay down as well. The God of heaven who came down to earth to show us life to its fullest. This movement from high to low, from heaven to earth, from king to servant. Throughout this season of Lent, we have been exploring the theme of treasures. Reflecting on Jesus' words, do not store up for yourselves treasures in, on earth where things just get destroyed or stolen, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. At first glance, we might think that means just keep our eyes looking up on things that are high and lofty and grand. And don't worry about the things happening on earth, down in the dirt and on the streets of every day of our everyday world. But in today's scripture, Jesus challenges us to shift our gaze, to see that when we look down from high to low, from great to small, that is where we are most likely to find heaven on earth. So our reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark. And before I read it, I just want to share with you that I got a new Bible. And uh, I've reached that point in life where I can't really read without my glasses. And so I got the large print. And I have to tell you, it's really heavy and really big. So, you know, I've got some stronger arms right now to to lift this up. (laughs) So listen now for God's word from Mark chapter 9, beginning in verse 30. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. So Jesus and and his disciples are just passing through on their way south along the Sea of Galilee and eventually to Jerusalem for Palm Sunday. He is focused on teaching his disciples and doesn't want to have time He doesn't really have time to stop and visit his hometown or have large crowds distract him from what he really wants to talk about with his friends. The fact that he would soon be dying. He said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They did not understand what he meant, and they were afraid to ask him about it. Jesus is talking about something very low indeed, something really hard to look at. He wants to talk to them about death, his death. Talking about death can make us uncomfortable. Amen? Jesus just wants to talk about it with his friends, but they don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. They were, in in fact, afraid to talk to him about it. So what did they do instead? They offloaded that anxiety, which we often do, by getting into an argument about something much more exciting. Who is the greatest? Verse 33 says, they came to Capernaum, When he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, 
Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Notice the movement. The disciples want to talk about who's at the top. And Jesus responds by sitting down. He says, let's go over this once again, guys. You treasure power and greatness because you think that's where the excitement of heaven is. But if you want to be first in my kingdom, you'll need to get used to being last. That doesn't sound fun, does it? And they resist it. We all resist it. Jesus says it's serving people, not bossing them. That's the stuff of heaven. Then he brings a small child and stands that small child in the midst of them. And then he brings that child into his arms. And we imagine he's still sitting down, so he puts this child on his lap. This child is powerless, especially in first century um, Palestine. Children had no power powerless and vulnerable. And I love what our Lenten study guide said. Jesus wraps the child in a hug and says to them, to the disciples, this, this is the center of the new world. I love that image, Jesus holding a young child and saying, this is the center of the new world. This week in the news, the faces and stories of vulnerable children caught our attention and broke our hearts once again. Continued turmoil in Central and South America has meant that hundreds, even thousands of children and teenagers are traveling without their parents and they are flooding our Southern border. Between October and February, Nearly 29,000 unaccompanied migrant children reach the U.S.-Mexico border. Our immigration system is simply overwhelmed, and children are being held for too long in detention centers. There are new emergency centers opening up, but there are whole systems that need reformed to better care for these children. Another set of children's faces have been in the news this week as well. Photos from March of 1942 on Bainbridge Island, where the first Japanese American men, women, and children were removed from their homes and taken to an internment camp for World War II. This Tuesday at 6 p.m. on Zoom is the Let It Not Happen Again, Lessons of the Japanese American Exclusion event hosted by Humanities Washington and the Bainbridge Island Japanese American Exclusion Memorial Association. Clarence Morawaki will share the story of Bainbridge Island, the origin point of the Japanese American exclusion. And he's gonna provide a human historical account of this national tragedy and pose the question, are there parallels to what is happening in America now? Gosh, that's an uncomfortable question. If you feel at all like the disciples did, don't totally understand and a little afraid to talk about it, you're not alone. I mean, you might be thinking, boy, what else could I do with myself on Tuesday night other than go to that Zoom? <laughs> There's gotta be something on Netflix or maybe a basketball game on. Facing up to our history of internment camps 80 years ago, and detention centers today is not easy. But it's important that we shift our gaze from what's exciting or entertaining to what's going on in the streets and systems of our world so that we see clearly what is happening to our most vulnerable. We have to face these truths and work toward healing and repair. As we celebrate Palm Sunday today, I invite all of us to consider that movement from great to small, 
from high to low, from first to last that Jesus shows us. The cutting of branches from trees and laying them down in the dirt. The God of the universe riding a donkey into town. Children held and hugged by Jesus. Men and women laying down power and control over others and becoming servants, embracing the vulnerable in themselves and in one another. And ultimately, of Jesus laying down his life on the cross, his body enclosed in a dark, earthy tomb. Yet this is the promise of resurrection that what is laid down will be lifted again. What is cut down will pave the way to new life. May it be to the glory of God Almighty and for the healing of the world. Amen. You go nowhere by accident. Wherever we go, God is sending us. 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 And he is sending me over here. Wherever we go, God is sending us. So go now with the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit Sustainer, this day and forevermore. Amen.
the whole realm of nature mine that were an offering far too small love so Demands my soul, my life, my all.